Well, I'd like to introduce you to the Schrader Reverberator, and I'll begin by refreshing your memory about the comb filter. Comb filter is a structure based on a delay line and a feedback multiplier that's always less than one. This constantly recirculating structure can accept a single impulse and produce a whole series of decaying impulses on the output. So you'd say the impulse response of the comb filter looks like this. We have very distinct spacing between the pulses and that's the loop time denoted tau. And eventually when the signal drops by a factor of 60 decibels we call that silence, and so the overall reverb time is referred to as T sub 60. Now if we compare the comb filter impulse response to that of a typical concert hall, we find that we have some strong impulses at the beginning, or the onset, of the response, and then the pulse density builds up while the amplitude decreases, and this all has to do with the fact that we have some direct path signals at the beginning or maybe taking one bounce. These are referred to as the early echoes. And then as the signals are bouncing around and taking multiple um, bounces before they finally get to your ear, that's where we see the amplitude dropping off and we also start to see this increasing density of impulses because we're just getting so many signal paths uh, that are finally finally getting to our ear. Now a critical observation is that we have non-uniform or almost random spacing between the impulses and that very regular spacing of the comb filter is not really a good match for reality. We also see the fact that the pulse density increases dramatically as as we uh, keep moving along in time. Now the Schrader reverberator begins with a number of comb filters called the C1 through C4 and each comb filter has its own delay time or each one has its own loop time excuse me. So that allows each of the comb filters to generate its own series of impulses, but since loop time controls the spacing, then we can start to get more pulses that are not necessarily spaced at some very predictable interval. And we can kind of maximize the non-overlap of the comb filter impulse impulses if we select these loop times to be relatively prime numbers. If all the loop times were, say, an integer multiple of each other, then most of the impulses would end up overlapping. So each comb filter looks at the input signal, generates its own response. These are added together and at this point, things are looking pretty good, but we can get even higher pulse density by passing the output of the combined comb filters through a couple all-pass filters. And in this design, we have two all-pass filters operating in cascade. Or you could also call that series connection if you like and then our finished output is taken at the output of the all-pass filter. Now an all-pass filter turns out has an interesting impulse response somewhat like the comb filter and this is used to really fatten up the pulse density.